All right, hey, what's up, guys? It's Ryan, and, uh, well, A, I, uh, I got a new mic, or I've had the mic for a bit, uh, but the mic stand came in, so I can actually start using it. So I hope uh, it actually sounds not trash, because the last one I was using, pretty trash. Um, just for comparison, I was using, embarrassingly, embarrassingly enough, uh, these... I, w I had them from forever ago and I would take it and like put it around my neck and just use the microphone um, because my like monitor headphones, uh, the M50Xs, they don't have a mic on them because they're studio monitor headphones. But now I'm using the Rode NT1, one of these things. So I uh, hope, it, hope it's doing well. And uh, anyways... I uh, thought I'd test it out by doing a uh, a walkthrough of my new track, Beanie Season. Um, it's kind of like a hip hoppy tune. Uh, and yeah, I thought it'd be... I actually made it entirely for this walkthrough just to test the mic, if we're being completely honest. So uh, let's, let's get right into it. Um, starts off with this. I think... My, yeah, I think my voice is loud enough. I think, I hope. All right, so intro. Uh, first off, we've got this Foley thing going the entire time. It's like just field recording. Like dust and noise, like it's nothing. It's nothing crazy. I, I have it in most of my tracks that are like of this style. Uh, or even when they're not, honestly. But yeah, this is uh, this is it. And got that going through the, through the entire track. Um, and I've got just some of the lows cut out and that's all the processing I have on that. But over, over here, this is bell sound. This is, uh, from play Goliath, uh, East West Goliath. And it's the music box, which is under keyboard mallet instruments, music box right there. Um, nothing done like in here uh i've got reverb on it these are the settings it's just good reverb uh and then delay right here i'm gonna quit steam all right there we go um delay uh and then i've got an eq for this intro right here that gets turned off when like the beat hits right there so it goes from it just kind of like takes out all of the extremes of each end And then it comes in like full force. Um, and then with that, I've got this lead double thing. And it does the same sort of thing with the automation. Um, this is just a massive patch. It's like a plucky saw wave right there with two voices. Um, this is what I'm looking for with like it short or fast decay and no release or a little bit of release and that's all that is there um i'm eqing it taking out some of the mids and lows boosting the highs Del the same delay the same filter the same eq yeah and uh that's that's all the intro is except for this drum roll uh this is superior drummer right there and um yeah and then the the bass actually like hits or the beat rather not the not the bass well and the bass and throughout this entire thing there's only like the same 27 things happening the entire time so I'm just going to go over them once and then kind of just talk about the so songwriting behind the uh, the rest of it. So I'm going to go from the top to the bottom, starting with this pad right here. All right, this is Serum. Um, 16 voices, saw wave, 
12 voices saw wave up an octave uh pretty basic the release is longer than most pads i would make um to get a little bit of a, like a fall off if you watch after the midi it keeps going and that's partially reverb partially uh release um i've got noise on it too just to add a little bit like more body uh, i got a hyper dimension for stereo and chorus to soften it up without both of these just to make it like not as aggressive because saw waves are pretty pretty rich as far as uh, frequencies go then a compressor just to like squish it all together uh then a hollow room 100 percent mix without it it sounds like this so adding the reverb or making it 100 percent reverb kind of washes it out um makes it more chill i guess i don't know so there's that and I, i've got some pretty this is actually just this is a basic uh seven chord and that goes down to the um the sharp seven i think which is yeah that goes down to the sharp seven so from F minor to E, um, diminished seven, I think, <laughs> I think. Um, so we've got that. We've got this lead, which again is serum. Uh, saw wave, 16 voices up an octave. And then another saw wave with two voices at like the standard pitch. And then I've got this LFO going on the sync uh warp just kind of randomly just to give it some movement and motion and the sound uh, i've got a little bit of release just like the uh the pad uh no effects actually and i do have uh vibrato enabled or like set up so if i yeah that's a uh, lfo2 as the source 17 amount master tuning which is under global right there uh, mod wheel 20 there i did an entire other video on how to get vibrato out of serum so that's just the overview go find the uh the video if you want like more in-depth sort of things um yeah that's it for that and then it's kind of just following the top notes on the chords and that's kind of all it does the entire time until it gets to like right here um where it goes and the vibrato actually kicks in yeah right there um i've got a Rhodes because i love Rhodes keyboards and this is just lounge lizard Rhodes 13 mark 5 just a preset Then I've got this EQ, just kind of sculpting the sound, I guess, to uh, to taste without it. It's very subtle, but you know, uh, most EQs are. Um, sub. This was uh, actually massive. So I've got this wavetable sine square uh, down two octaves position you gotta tell me no um, position like right there probably around 20 um, and then teletube distortion with these settings right here and then I've got a little bit of a release and decay on it kind of make it like 8080 um, and then that's just following the bass notes of the chord. Then you've got the music box and the lead double, uh, and then superior drummer again. Uh, on the synth bus though, I have it side chained relatively hard to this side chain in, which is just the kick.
but like muted and pretty like snappy if we listen to it then yeah it's just it plays every time i want it to duck which is usually when the kick and the snare hit um yeah and there's that uh and then we've got drums which i've got a maximus on just doing like barely anything just kind of bringing it up and shaping the stereo image a little bit um then so i've got two kicks got this one which is kind of just the high end it's got very little lows which makes it perfect for what i wanted then i've got the thump which is like the thing that has the full low end so together you get a pretty solid hip hoppy kick sort of thing um and i've got two snares one is that and the other is this this is more 808 um then this is kind of just weird but i put them together and the 808 ish snare is better for fills because you can like pitch it and then it's got like a tone to it so if you pitch it you can actually kind of hear and feel it and uh just a pretty basic groove um i've got this hi-hat right here which is kind of just following the uh kick and snare or the main kick and snare um, just to add a little bit of like punch on top of everything uh oh also these or this snare at least has an eq'd knocking out the lows and reverb the other one does not because i guess i thought it was fine before uh this ride just got on the offbeat this eq right here just to taste and then reverb on top of it with the low cut and then that's all i did to change it um we got foley again got this crash Oops. which is just like a crash sample uh valhalla room reverb right here simple delay and an eq very basic um Maybe got this noise riser, which I'm using is kind of like a secondary crash, but I actually use like the riser part of it over here. Um, felt weird to have like a noise riser without like a noise hit over there, so I just I I made it over here, uh, right here. It felt weird to have like that much frequency going up and then straight to nothing, so I reversed it uh, and then put put it over there just because I could. I've got this other riser, which I grabbed from Leviathan. And I don't ever make my own risers, honestly, just because it takes too much time. Um, and like I always put them like pretty in the background anyways. Unless there's something super, I can speak, I swear, super specific that I want, then I never make my own risers. And uh, Leviathan from Black Octopus is great when it comes to that sort of thing. So uh, I use a ton of their risers everywhere. Um, so, yeah. So it goes on, songwriting-wise, pretty similar, or pretty repetitive for this first part if I unmute everything and it goes down to the six and then it does that for a while and then it goes into like a halftime groove Where it's only like a chord hit every four bars or two bars. I meant four bars. And then the uh, 
the lead starts getting crazy with all like the pitch bends and like vibratos. And it goes right back into this, which is the same as the intro. And more superior drummer fills. Right back into the, the same old, same old. And then uh, at the end, the, uh, the synth pitch bends down. Just like a, a little bit of a subtle thing to kind of draw the song to a close. And then uh, the music box finishes out and the simple delay feedback gets automated up so it can ring on for forever and ever and ever. And ever. As far as mastering goes, uh, my mastering process is like non-existent really people uh to me mastering is overrated to me that doesn't mean that it's not valuable for other people's workflows and whatever but uh like it's not just super it's just not super important for me um if we listen before that's after mastering and that's before mastering It's basically just like a little punchier and a little louder for like, and that's just how I, I do it. I mix it super, what I think is super well. So all I have to do is basically turn up the volume. Um, that's just not some people's style though. Uh, the lows I've got just pretty mono, 78%. Mids, just a little separated. Highs, a little more separated. And then master, I've got it like, the volume boosted just a little bit and that's that's all i'm doing for the master and uh it it wins the loudness war all right yeah there it is um it gets the negative 0.22 which is fine by me that's close enough to zero <laughs> by by every means so um yeah that's the track beanie season uh, and also my mic test hope the mic sounds good I think it sounds good. Uh, if you've got any suggestions for it, leave them down in the comments. If you've got any questions about the track or music in general, be sure to let me know. And uh, subscribe, like, comment, do all of that nonsense. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.